1800 hours pakistan standard time assalamu alaikum this is radio pakistan the news read by daman zaman the headlines the prime minister says fascist policies of narendra modi are the biggest threat to regional peace and stability Kashmir is living on both sides of the line of control and the rest of the world will observe the Indian Republic Day as Black Day tomorrow. The Minister for Economic Affairs says Pakistan has made significant progress to combat money laundering and terror financing. China has again vowed to work with Pakistan to promote high quality development of CPAC to bring more benefits to the people. Pakistan has expressed deep grief and sorrow over the loss of precious lives in the deadly earthquake in Turkey. Pakistan won the three-match T20 series against Bangladesh, beating it by nine wickets in Lahore this evening. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Imran Khan says the world is now acknowledging the anti-democratic and fascist ideology being imposed in occupied Kashmir and in India. In a tweet today, he said the fascist policies of Narendra Modi are the biggest threat to regional peace and stability. He pointed out that already 8 million Kashmiris and Muslims in India are suffering because of Modi's fascist policies. The Prime Minister in his Twitter account has also shared the cover page of the weekly magazine The Economist titled Intolerant India and how Modi is endangering the world's biggest democracy. Kashmiris living on both sides of the line of control and the rest of the world will observe the Indian Republic Day as Black Day tomorrow to draw the world attention towards the continued Indian occupation in Indian held Kashmir. This year, Kashmiris are observing the Black Day at a time when the Modi government scrapped the special status of the internationally acknowledged disputed territory. It has also usurped the international and fundamental rights of the citizens through massive deployment of its military and prolonged curfew and communications blackout. Protest rallies and demonstrations will be held all over the world, including Pakistan and Azad Kashmir. Meanwhile, India's Republic Day has brought more miseries to the already besieged people as the Indian troops have intensified checking and frisking in the Sirinagar city and other parts of the occupied Kashmir Valley in the name of so-called security measures. Billionaire philanthropist George Soros has termed India's Controversial Citizenship Amendment Act as the biggest and most frightening setback to the survival of open societies. Speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos, he said the democratically elected Narendra Modi is creating a Hindu national state, imposing punitive measures on Kashmir, a semi-autonomous Muslim region. He said Narendra Modi's act is also threatening to deprive millions of Muslims of their citizenship in India. The Minister for Economic Affairs, Hamad Asar, has said Pakistan has made significant progress to combat money laundering and terrorism financing. In a tweet today, he said, our authorities worked very hard over the last few months and we remain committed to sustaining this momentum. Hamad Azhar said it is premature to comment and speculate on the decision that the Financial Action Task Force members shall take in the plenary next month. The minister expressed the hope that the attempts by certain quarters to politicize the Financial Action Task Force proceedings would be rejected. The Special Assistant to the Prime Minister on Information and Broadcasting, Dr. Fazos Ashikawan, says bilateral relations between Pakistan and China are gaining strength with each passing year, felicitating the people of China on the occasion of the Chinese New Year. She's tweeted that the friendship with China is our great asset. Fazos Ashikawan pointed out that China, Pakistan Economic Corridor, is another bright manifestation of the everlasting friendship between the two countries. China has appreciated Prime Minister Imran Khan's recent remarks about the China-Pakistan economic corridor. In a statement issued today, the Chinese Foreign Ministry said since the launch of CPAC, significant positive progress has been made. 
It said at least 32 projects have yielded early harvest, playing an important role in promoting Pakistan's economic and social development and improving people's well-being. In advancing the construction of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, China has always followed the principle of joint consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits, and has always given priority to the interests of the Pakistani people. The statement said China is ready to work with Pakistan to continue to promote high-quality development of the corridor and bring more benefits to the two peoples. This is Radio Pakistan. The Ministry of Finance has described as misleading and factually incorrect a news report published in a section of the press claiming that the government's foreign borrowings increased by $5.5 billion during the July-December 2019 period. In a statement issued today, the Ministry of Finance contended that reporting gross external debt inflows only presents one side of the picture ignoring outflows on account of repayments, which are the other side of the picture, and a prerequisite to calculate the net or actual increase in external indebtedness of the country. The ministry further clarified that gross external public debt inflows during financial year 2018-2019 were recorded at $10.5 billion and not $16 billion, as claimed by a section of the press. Similarly, the government repaid $7.4 billion during the last fiscal year, resulting in net increase of $3.1 billion in external public debt and not $16 billion, as claimed. Prime Minister Imran Khan will launch Esas Kafalat program for deserving families on Friday next. This was stated by the Minister for Communications, Murad Saeed, and the Special Assistant to the Prime Minister on Social Protection and Poverty Alleviation, Sanya Nishtar, after reviewing different aspects of the program in Islamabad today. In his remarks, the Minister for Communication said Esas is the most comprehensive program of the government for the welfare of the poor people. President Dr. Arif Alvi and Prime Minister Imran Khan have expressed deep grief and sorrow over the loss of life and property in Turkey's earthquake. In his remarks, the President said Pakistani nation shares the grief of their Turkish brethren and stand by them in this difficult hour. In a tweet, Prime Minister Imran Khan said our prayers are with the brotherly people and the government of Turkey. He said Pakistan stands by them and is ready to extend any assistance in this hour of need. China has stepped up its response to a new coronavirus outbreak that has killed 41 people and infected over 1,280 in the mainland, ordering nationwide measures to detect the virus at transport terminals. Beijing also expanded travel restrictions, affecting the movement of 56 million people in more than a dozen cities amid fears that the transmission rate will accelerate as hundreds of millions of Chinese travel for the Lunar New Year. The first death anniversary of renowned actress Ruhi Bano is being observed today. Ruhi Bano had worked in popular serials and dramas like Kiran Kahani, Zard Gulab and Darwaza and many other famous popular dramas in the 1970s and 1980s. She was awarded the Pride of Performance in 1981. And now cricket. Pakistan has won the three-match T20 series against Bangladesh by nine wickets in the second match in Lahore this evening, batting first, Bangladesh scored 136 runs for the loss of six wickets in the allotted 20 overs. In reply, Pakistan achieved the target in 16.4 overs for the loss of one wicket. Babar Azam was declared player of the match. Pakistan lead the series by 2-0. And finally, the weather, mainly cold and dry weather, along with partly cloudy weather, is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, cloudy weather conditions with light rain and snowfall over the mountains is expected at isolated places in Upper Punjab, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Northern Balochistan, and Gilgit Baltistan, as well as Islamabad, Kashmir, and its adjoining hilly areas. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.